Okay, now we already set up our fretboard and it's looking pretty good. Uh, we have we have strings, we have frets, we have the fret marks, we have the fret marks on the twelfth fret and on the third, fifth, and seventh, and so on. But um, at some point, we might want to change uh, the fretboard so it has four strings, so it has more or less frets. Maybe we want to show a full two octave guitar with 24 frets. Maybe we want to change it to a to a bass guitar with five or four strings. And um, we don't want to have to go into the HTML every time we want to do that. So we want to make it dynamic, and we're going to do that through JavaScript. So I'm going to open up the, the app.js file that we created in the beginning, and I'm going to grab the fretboard because that is where we want to add stuff. We want to add the strings, and we want to add these note fret divs. And in a later video, we'll also add these again. So um, fear not, because that's going to make it way more awesome and uh, way more dynamic, and that's what we want. So in my app.js file, I'm going to make a constant. I'm going to call it fretboard and document query selector. And it had a class name of fretboard. So now we grab this one, we can start to add some stuff in it. Um, so that's the first thing we will do. Actually, the very first thing I want to do is I want to make an object and a method on that object. Uh, that we can use several times because I know that in the future we're going to have to add more elements um, in the settings and, and things like that. So let's start doing that. And I like to split it up into different objects so we can um, keep our code pretty clear. So I'm going to make one a constant here and I'm going to call it tools. And the first tool we're going to make here on this object is create element tool. So this is our first method on this tools object. And what do we want to do with this? Well, we want to be able to create elements in the in the DOM, in the HTML. And we need to know what kind of element we need. Uh, so I'm going to type in element. So it takes an element argument. And if we want to add some content to it, that would be pretty cool if we could do that as well. So I'm going to type in content here. So every time we want to create an element, we, we just call this method here. So I'm going to start by saying element is going to be equal to document create element. And then what kind of element do we want to create? Well, we want to create the element that we pass into this method. And that can be whatever. It could be a button. It could be a div. It can be whatever HTML element you want to create. Uh, and then we put that in so that we overwrite this one here that we just passed in. And maybe sometimes we don't want to put any content in it. And I know that uh, many of the many of the frets here, they're actually empty. Um, so sometimes we don't want to put anything into it, any text content. So in order to check for that, I'm going to check how many arguments we pass in. So I'm going to make an if statement and I'm going to ask how many arguments do we have? So if arguments, the number of arguments passed to this method, if it, if the length of that is uh, greater than one, then we know we pass in content also. Then I want to take the element and I want to, oops, like this. I want to say the inner HTML. I want to set the inner HTML of this, but only if I pass in content. And I want to set that equal to the content that we pass in. So that way, if you pass anything, it'll add that to the, uh, to the element. But if you don't pass anything, we just want to return the element empty like this. Okay, I'm going to save that. And nothing is, of course, going to happen because we didn't do anything about it yet. But now we have this helper tool here to create elements that we will use again and again. So let's create another object. I'm going to call it app because this is where we will keep many of our 
app things. Like we will set up the fretboard in here. Uh, first of all, I want to initialize something. So I always like to have the first method on this uh, main app object. I like to initialize it here and I like to call it init for initialization. And this is where we can call some things. It's going to be empty uh, right now, but um, later on we'll add something to it. The next method I want to add here is going to be called setup fretboard. And uh, this is where we're going to set up the fretboard. Before we can do that, though, we need some variables. We need to know something. We need to know how many strings and we need to know how many frets we want to create on this fretboard. So up here, I'm going to type out another variable here, a const, and I'm going to call it uh, number of frets. Let's set it equal to 12 to begin with. And I'm going to make another one called number of strings. And set that equal to 6. Because that's what we already have. I'm going to save that. Nothing's going to happen. Then I can go back here to set up fretboard. And um, first I want to add strings to fretboard. So I'm going to type that out. Sorry, I want to add the strings first. So add strings. Oh, it's always nice to have a little comment so you can remember what you're trying to do here. We're going to use a for loop for that because then we can loop over this thing the number of string times. And we want to add six strings to begin with. So uh, so let's do that. So for. And I'm going to set let i equals zero to begin with. And as long as i is less than number of strings in this case it's 6, then we want to increment i. And okay, so every time we want to add a string, remember in the HTML we have one string with some content, another string with some content, and so on. So we want to create six of those first. So how do we do that? Well, we can create another element. We know it's a div, so and we already made this tool down here to create an element, so let's, let's do that first. So I'm going to let string I'm going to set that to tools, which points to this object down here, and create an element. And we're going to pass in only one argument, because we only want a div to begin with. We don't want any text content in that div. So now it's going to create a div element for us, or actually six of them. And then I am going to add a class name to this one. So I'm going to take the string that we just created and I'm going to call class list. And then we're going to add something to that class list. And I want to add the class string because it has a class of string here. So for every single one of these divs that we're creating, we're going to add the class string. And after that, I want to append it to the fretboard. So we're going to grab the fretboard that we already grabbed up here and uh, fret fretboard and we're going to append child. And what are we going to append? We are going to append the string. So that will take care of of the six strings. So let's just set up the fretboard from here. And I need to type out this because it's on the same object. And let's call it. Okay. Then this is going to call set up fretboard method. And all the way at the bottom, I just want to call the initialization method. So app in it like this. If I save that, we should see something weird happening here. And we do because uh, it's adding a lot of uh, new strings to it. And we already have a lot of strings here. Uh, so it's just going to add extra strings if we go in here and we inspect and we have a look at um, this here. You can see that we have lots of strings here. So yeah, it, it's a mess. And we don't need a 12-string guitar. That would be insane. That would be really hard. Uh, so let's not do that at all. So um, we're going to wait with that. I'm not going to clear the HTML here yet. Because I want to show you guys that inside this for loop, 
you can see that we have inside each string we have the amount of frets a div for every single fret that we set the amount to and right here it's static and it's only 12 divs which means 12 frets so let's add that and we need to have a loop inside a loop then so inside this one here after we we append the child string then we can create another loop here so I am going to add a comment here so we can remember what we're actually doing so inside here we are gonna uh, create frets here and then inside that we're going to say four and let's just call it something that's understandable so let fret that's what we're doing let's start from zero again and then we want to see as when fret is less than or equal to number of frets which we defined up here then increment like this okay and the reason we want uh, equal to that's because we have a fret number zero here so we want to run to like if we have 12 right now we want to make it run 13 times and, and because it's, we start at zero uh, and we have third 12 up here it's gonna run yeah 13 times um, and that's what we want because we want to add the first fret also so when we have 12 frets we actually have 13 frets uh, so it's always plus one and inside here we are going to do kind of the same thing that we did I'm gonna create a new variable and I'm gonna call it note fret because that's what we're gonna add we're gonna call the tools again create the element here and we're gonna pass in a div that's it and then we're gonna add a, um, a class to that as well so we're gonna take note fret class list add and we will add the class note fret dash dash fret like this because that's what they're called in here okay and then we want to take the string that we just created up here in the first loop it's going to take that and we're going to append it the note fret to that one so string append child and we're going to append the note fret oops like this so that will for every single string for all of the six strings we have or how how many strings we have this is going to run this for loop here and then inside that we are going to uh, create as many frets as we set so we have 12 frets and then we're going to add it oops i found something here append child that's probably better then we're going to append that to the to the string that we just created up here and that's going to run six times and this is going to run 12 times so it's a loop inside a loop um, I'm gonna save that and now it looks really weird but let's try and go back here and delete this stuff here um, just gonna take all of this stuff here and all the way down to here and delete it and save and ta-da we still have it over here however as you probably noticed we don't have the fret marks anymore cuz I'm just gonna undo you can see that in our first string we put the fret marks single fret mark single fret mark single fret mark here and then we have a div inside the last or inside number 12 here and that is called double fret mark so we're gonna have to add that as well and we're gonna do that in uh, the next video but first before I delete it all I just want to take a copy of it because maybe we want to go back and look at what's actually going on so I'm just gonna cut this out here and just create a new file I'm gonna save this create a new file and then I am gonna put it in here uh, let's call it uh, doesn't really matter let's call it frets HTML 
we're not gonna use it for anything I just want to be able to go back and check how we put the, the different classes on here in the next video so see you in the next video and by the way I do apologize for the sound of the bird in the background but I just can't do anything about it right now sorry <laughs>